dear students welcome to msbt online learning platform we bring you the most relevant content in a most attractive digital format myself professor sadhu bajira nagarwoje working as lecturer in civil engineering department csmss college of polytechnic kanchanodi aurangabad so today we will going to study very interesting module of building construction that is building finishes course outcome of this topic is select relevant material for finishing work so learning outcomes or learning objectives are first choose the flooring material for the given type of building with justification explain the procedure for laying and construction of given type of floor and then third that we will discuss in this particular video that is describe the procedure of plastering and pointing for the given type of construction and uh, the fourth one we will study in the next video that is select the relevant type of paint material to be used for the given type of building surface this is a concept map of uh, these learning outcomes so what we will learn today first necessities of plastering then different types of plastering methods then different types of pointing methods now this is a concept map of methods of plastering here you can see the different types of plastering methods such as stucco plaster pop pebble dash shingle coat plaster double coat plaster rough finish sponge finish and nero finish these are the different methods of plastering that we will going to study here so first of all let's study the properties of good plaster then what is mean by plaster plaster it is a mixture of lime or gypsum sand and water sometimes with fiber added that hardens to a smooth solid and is used for coating walls and ceilings the coating of mortar or plastic material is called as plaster then properties of good plaster first property of good plaster is it should be hard and durable then it should be possible to apply it during all weather conditions then it should adhere to the background and should remain adhere during all climatic changes it should be cheap and economical the applied plaster should be cheap and economical it should offer good insulation against sound and high resistance against fire and then it should effectively check the penetration of moisture from the surfaces then let us study our uh, study objectives or necessities of plastering first to provide an even smooth regular clean and durable finished surface with improved appearance this is a first and very important objective of the plastering then plastering is done for the preservation and protection of the surface to cover up the use of porous material of the machinery work then to conceal 
defective workmanship to protect external surfaces against penetration of rainwater and other atmospheric agencies these are the main objectives of plastering again to give smooth surface in which dust and dirt cannot lodge then let us see the different types of mortar for plastering there are three major types of mortars used for the plastering first lime mortar it may be either fat lime or hydraulic lime fat lime yields good putty after slaking or preferred more hydraulic lime contains particles which slake very slowly slow slaking may cause blisters the mix proportion for lime mortar is uh, lime as to sand it must be between 1 as to 3 to 1 as to 4 for the fat lime and 1 as to 2 for the hydraulic lime in addition to this the addition of google can improve the binding properties of the lime mortar then mixing of chop hemp can improve adhesive and tensile properties of lime mortar and that's that's why for improving the adhesive or tensile properties these mixes are done then second cement mortar being non absorbent it is best for external plastering work cement mortar is the best type of plastic mortar or mortar for plastering for the external work it is preferred in damp rooms and damp climates due to its non absorbent property it is stronger than lime mortar again it does not possesses sufficient plasticity mix proportion that is cement as to sand is kept between the ratio of 1 as to 4 to 1 as to 6 mortar should be used before initial setting takes place and sand used should be clean coarse and uh, angular for making cement mortar for the better output then the third type is lime cement mortar it contains properties of both lime mortar as well as cement mortar that's why it is named as lime cement mortar addition of lime imparts plasticity resulting in smooth plastered surface then mix proportions for this type as cement as to lime as to sand are between 1 as to 6 or 1 as to 1 as to 8 or it may be 1 as to 2 as to 8 are preferred then preparation of background for the application of plastering so for preparation of background some points are important here joints should be raked to a depth of 10 mm in brick masonry and 15 mm in stone masonry for providing key to the plaster mortar droppings and dust should be removed with wire brush unevenness is leveled before applying mortar surface should be washed with clean water uniformly to produce optimum suction then next point is methods of plastering first one 
सिंगल कोट प्लास्टर द सिंगल कोट इज प्रोवाइडेड फॉर लेवलिंग ऑफ अन इवन सर्फेस इट सील्स द सर्फेस ऑफ वॉल टू प्रिवेंट वॉटर पेनिट्रेशन इन द वॉल अगेन द थिकनेस ऑफ सिंगल कोट शुड नॉट एक्सीड ट्वेल्व एम एम एंड शुड नॉट बी लेस देन सिक्स एम एम दैट मीन्स द थिकनेस ऑफ सिंगल कोट प्लास्टर शुड बी विद इन सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व एम एम द सर्फेस ऑफ फर्स्ट कोट केप्ट वेट टिल द सेकंड कोट इज अप्लाइड देन द सेकंड मेथड ऑफ प्लास्टरिंग इज डबल कोट प्लास्टर और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज फ्लोएटिंग कोर्स द सिंगल कोट इज क्लीन ऑफ ऑल डर्ट एंड लूज मटेरियल एंड दैट्स वाई द डबल कोट इज नेसेसरी लाइटली वेटेड पैचेस अप्लाइड एट सुटेबल स्पेसिंग टू एक्ट एज गेजेस मॉर्टर इज देन थ्रोन विथ मेसन्स ट्रॉवेल स्प्रेड एंड ड्रब्ड विथ वुडन फ्लोएट टू मेक इट स्मूथ द थिकनेस ऑफ सेकंड कोट इज यूजली बिटवीन सिक्स टू टेन एम एम देन द थर्ड मेथड ऑफ प्लास्टरिंग इज रफ फिनिश द मॉर्टर contain of coarse grain sand with proportion of 1s to 3 here the proportion is taken as larger as it is a rough finish the rough finish in which the mortar is dashed against the surface by means of large trowel and the surface is roughly finished by the light movement of wooden fluid then next method is sponge finish in this type of finishing sponge structure surface are freely move or made on the final coat of plaster with the help of a suitable tools this finish is a textured finish then next method niru finish or finishing coat this coat consists of creat white or fat lime called as niru in case of lime sand mortar finishing coat is applied immediately after floating coat and then it consists of lime cream and sand usually in the ratio of 4s to 1 applied with steel trowel and rubbed and finished smooth it is left for one day and then curing is done for at least 7 days in case of lime surki mortar finishing coat is applied after 7 days of floating coat after cleaning the surface then sixth method is stucco plaster stucco is the name given to a decorative type of plaster which gives an excellent finish this method provides a excellent finishing to the plastered surface stucco plaster can be used for interior as well as exterior surfaces it is usually laid in uh, three coats making the total thickness of the plaster to about 25 mm the first coat is called the scratch coat the second one is finer coat also known as brown coat and the third is called white coat or finishing coat then next method of plastering is plaster of paris or it is popularly called as pop 
plaster of paris obtained from gypsum which is a naturally occurring material it hardens within 3 to 4 minutes of adding water retarders are also added to increase setting time it is used in combination with lime pop is used for ornamental work repairing holes and cracks pop has properties of fire resisting light in weight sound insulating good adhesion or fibrous materials pop is pop produce very smooth finish with sharp edge at the corner then next plastering method is pebble dash or dry dash finish it is a finish in which small pebbles or crushed stones of suitable size are thrown on a freshly applied final coat of mortar and left exposed the ratio of cement to coarse sand is usually kept 1 to 3 clean pebbles of size varying from 10 mm to 20 mm are dashed against the surface that they are held in position again it is applied in uh, almost 12 mm thickness so let's hope you understand what we studied in this video thank you thank you so much